you're tuned in to Can You Hear Me? Let's talk about mental health. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Can You Hear Me? Let's talk about mental health. Today is episode 14, Time to Help and Heal. There is a lot of, there is a great need, I would say, for healing and a need for help uh, during these extraordinary times. We're seeing more and more increases in coronavirus cases because we're in a global health pandemic. And the numbers to continue to increase in here in the United States. We're dealing with social isolation. We're dealing with civil unrest. We are also dealing with not able to, to, to truly socialize with our friends, family, our loved ones. And we have to do things differently. Right now, we're in a, a situation where schools are reopening or not reopening, or some have to. Uh, go to virtual learning instead of in class learning because of the coronavirus. We we'll still have that situation going on. Today's guest is Ms. Ebony Woney. She is a licensed mental health counselor, and she will speak with us in terms of what, uh, how she got involved in the field of psychiatry or mental health, and. Uh, we'll find out what she's up to. We'll talk to her in a moment. We'll be back back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And our guest for today is Miss Ebony Wody, and she is a licensed mental health counselor. And uh, she has been involved in this practice uh, dealing with mental health for about, uh, I'll say, 10 years. Or is it 10 months? No, it's about 10 years. <laughs> okay. So for 10 years, she has been involved in, in helping people dealing with their inner fitness, as I've uh, learned that term today. And we're going to talk uh, more about the inner fitness or mental health and in terms of what she's been doing and uh, helping others in the community. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Miss Ebony Woney. Welcome, Thank Ebony. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, how did you, well, what compelled you to get involved uh, in this practice of uh, dealing with mental health? You know, it's pretty funny. I, when I originally started, when I went to college, you know, you're supposed to have a game plan. So I went into college and I had every intention to go in for music business. And I had a professor of mine come in. It was a guest speaker that said, you know, in order for you to get anywhere in music business, college is not going to do it for you. So there's no point. And I was commuting to and from the Bronx to Long Island every day. And I was heartbroken. Like, how could you come in here and tell me that I'm wasting three and a half hours one way to get to and from school to say that it's not going to work out in my career path? So um, after some soul searching and trying to figure out, well, what is it that I love and what do I feel like I'm good at? Um, I, I jumped into psychology and absolutely fell head over heels in love with the content, with the ability to help somebody that is struggling to be able to get to the place that they want to be in. Mm. Oh, well, that's amazing. Were there any obstacles that you had to overcome uh, to to make that accomplishment? Oh, of course. I had a lot of personal obstacles that I had to overcome with school. I am definitely a very lazy student. Um, <laughs> I, I laugh a lot about that because I am. I'm definitely a lazy student, but um, I had come to realize about myself that I'm only lazy in areas that I'm not passionate about, which is, you know, it doesn't make any excuses for it. But um, when I started going through that and going through school, the hurdles were kind of going through classes that I wasn't interested in, um, studying subjects that I was not 
passionate about. So having to get to the place where, okay, I'm walking past these things just to get to my ultimate goal. So by the time I hit grad school, I was absolutely madly in love. Hmm. Awesome story. Hmm. Now, uh, given the nature of what's going on in the country with the global health pandemic and all of the civil unrest and um, I guess the talk of politics, have you uh, seen like an increase in the inquiries uh, regarding, you know, the services that you provide? Um, and what is it that you're seeing now, given the nature of the state of the country that, or I guess the state, the state that we're in with the, with the country and the pandemic? I, I think we're in a really scary place um, in, in the country, in the world right now, which is unfortunately the best time for people to seek mental health because when it feels like all bets are off and all odds are against you, it can very much feel overwhelming. So there has absolutely been an increase in inquiries regarding um, people seeking therapy, whether it's for individual therapy, whether it's for family therapy, people are seeking therapy for their children, uh, for relationship issues. Um, I think people are very um, anxious about what's getting ready to happen. And because of the anxiety that they're experiencing and what's going to happen, they're also dealing with a lot of the baggage that they have never dealt with before in their life, which is bringing up all of these feelings and it's causing all of this confusion internally, but it makes for I tell people, this is the best time to go and find you a therapist that you love. Now is the time to deal with all of the things because the things moving forward, I tend to be, I try to be an optimistic type of person uh, to, in order to move into this new realm that I feel like everyone is moving into in this unforeseen territory. You want to deal with the baggage that you have now so that way you're not taking it into your, your next level. Mm. Now, in terms of, uh, like I said, given the environment, would you be willing to share in terms of maybe what you do for your self-care? Oh, oh, goodness. So let's see. What do I do? I I am a horrible, horrible at self-care for myself. I, I will readily admit that. But what I try to do is I enjoy spending time with my family. I enjoy spending time with my friends. So I'll get on the phone and have have a long conversation with a girlfriend. I'll have I have a three year old that I also deal with mom guilt about having to leave him to go to work every day. So I try to make sure that. Um, yes, it's enriching him, but it's also self-care for myself when I get to go home and kind of take off the therapist hat and just get to to put on the mom hat for the rest of the day. So playing games with him and being able to hear him laugh and watching movies with my husband, things like that make makes it all feel not so heavy when I can engage in these things and not just have to worry about everything that's going on in this crazy world right now. Well, oh, oh, that's, a, that's a good thing. And you, and you mentioned previously that you were thinking about going into the music business. Yes. Uh, hmm. I wonder if you've thought maybe at that time that music therapy might've been <laughs> a, a pursuit of study. You know what? I didn't have that thought then. I just knew that for me, it was a form of therapy. Mm -hmm. For me, music has always been this thing that has made the world not so scary. It's been a place where I can express myself. It's been a place where I can hear others express themselves without necessarily having to discuss all of those things that you're feeling in depth, but it is still a way for you to explore all of those feelings and get them out in a more therapeutic kind of way. So now that you're saying it, maybe it was like subconsciously something that I was thinking about, but it's definitely always been something that has been helpful for me. And I was looking for a way to kind of express that with other people. And it's interesting because we know that music uh, definitely is a form of, or just anything regarding the arts. So it's just a form of expression of 
what's going on, particularly what's given the nature of the current environment. And, and I'm seeing a lot of it uh, more and more. I'm seeing, uh, particularly in social media, in terms of, well, the music. And I know some artists and I've seen like visual uh, I guess visual concepts, if you will, in terms of what's yeah. going on, uh, definitely using arts as a form of truly expressing how, how that individual or maybe a group of people feel and uh, just a way to get through the, the confusion, if you will. Yes, yes, it's an amazing coping mechanism yeah. during this time is just to have another outward form of expressing yourself and without having to talk, because sometimes talking, even if you're in a depressive state, if you're in a state that you're so anxious, having to talk about the things that are going on in your mind just seems like an extra burden, an extra layer to add on. So me not having to necessarily talk about the things that I'm experiencing and have another way of being able to kind of work through that, whether it be through art, whether it be through music, whatever it is, working out. I know a lot of people have started working out with no intention of necessarily losing weight, but just a way to kind of get these endorphins going and kind of express themselves and get this energy out to that they feel like they can't get out otherwise. Right. Yeah. Like in my situation, I know that there are activities limited here uh, because we're here in Florida and just going to the mailbox is like, okay, I can actually get out, get outside. Uh, As before the pandemic hit, I would go to the park and walk for maybe a couple of miles and, you know, not even think about it. But uh, yeah. Took a lot of things for granted (laughs) pre-COVID. Yes. Yes. And yeah. And, and, and pre-COVID with, I would say during this time of COVID, it's, you 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 realize that it's like you know the the interaction the being able to go out uh we're not able to travel to other states or other countries <laughs> at the moment yes and uh it's i'm like okay this is different from last year oh yeah <laughs> well uh, how is it that our listeners can uh connect with you So I can be connected with on social media. I I do not have a Facebook. I'm probably one of the only people left in the world that does not But I am on Instagram at Ebony Rooney. um, And I'm also on LinkedIn, Ebony Rooney as well. Um, I can be reached. You can look at my my profile on Psychology Today. I'm also on Therapy therapy for Black Girls. Um, So I am reachable in some ways, except for Facebook, but I am more than happy to uh, offer free consultations for everyone, 15 to 20 minute consultations. I always like to give a few minutes to chat and make sure that, that I am a good fit for the people that are inquiring for therapy and that they feel comfortable with me. Uh, That is a really big thing for me, engagement. Um, So I can be reached on any of those platforms. Okay. Well, well, we definitely want to keep in touch with you, Ebony, and just to see how things are going with you. And and you are in New York, correct? Yes. Okay. So being in New York and in our organization, uh, we are expanding, providing that we want to expand actually into all 50 states. So uh, definitely uh, we will be in touch. Thank you so much. It was an absolute pleasure talking to you today. Oh, likewise. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Miss Ebony Woney, licensed mental health counselor. You are tuned in to Can You Hear Me? Let's talk about mental health. Thanks for listening to the Can You Hear Me podcast. Be sure to visit MIPPLLC.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and find out more information about us. Until next time.